Hello friends, let's design the software application which provide the text-based instant messaging service to its user like uh, WhatsApp or Facebook Messenger. So user should have real-time chat experience with minimum latency and of course high availability is desirable for any messaging system. So let's discuss the requirement of this particular design. So our, my requirement is these. So user should support one-to-one -one conversation from the two different users. So it's very flexible to send a message to the other user. My second requirement is service should support the persistent storage of the chat history. So as the user scroll to its chat history, we should provide the immediate result of all the history of the chat to the particular user. And my third requirement is service should keep track of online and offline status of its user. So as soon as the user become online from the offline status, then it should immediately get notification to all the rest of the guys that that particular person is online. So that person can easily be communicated. For reducing the complexity, I removed the group chat option from the messaging service that's there in the WhatsApp. Uh, the design of the messaging system is little different from the rest of the design questions as WhatsApp kind of messaging service have 500 million daily active users and on an average each user sends the 40 messages daily. So this gives us approximately 20 billion messages per day. So each and every user chat history must be saved into the databases and also user very frequently open its chat history simply by scrolling the chat window up. So retrieving the the text from the DB is also a challenging here. So let's see the design in detail. Let's discuss the high level design of the messaging system. So as a high level, of course, my main entity is user. So let's say these are the two users who wants to communicate with each other by using our messaging system. So the first and the foremost entity is chat server. So at a high level, we need a chat server that would be the central piece of orchestrating all the communication between the users. When a user want to send a message to another user, they will first connect to the chat server and send message to the server. And then this particular chat server, which is the actually the chat server of the user one, will try to find out the chat server for user two. And then it sends the message to that other chat server and correspondingly send the data to the DB. So let's say this is my chat server B. As you can see in the chat server, I have written here 20,000 connections. So basically one chat server can communicate with the 20,000 different users at a time and 20,000 different connection can be created by the using the chat server. And as we have the millions of customers, millions of the users who is trying to access the WhatsApp message or any messaging system. So that's why we need a clusters of chat servers. So in this case, just assume that for this particular user, which is a user one, chat server A is assigned to it. And for a user two, chat server B is assigned to it. And uh, as a first step, the user one will send a message. Let's say this message is A and this message it sends to the chat server A. And now as soon as this chat server get the message from the user, it will process that particular message. It got to know that, that which is the destination user for this particular message A. So first it will store that information into a database and correspondingly it starts searching the chat server, which actually connected with the, our destination user, which is actually user two in this case. So it find out, let's say this chat server B is my desired destination chat server. So it sends that message to this chat server B. Let's say at that time, as soon as the message A, which sends by the user one reach to the chat server B, then at the same time, user two also sends a message and the message, let's say it's a B. And then corresponding this chat server send that message to chat server A because chat server A is connected with my desired user one. So basically user one is sending the data to user two and user two is sending the data to the user one. And that can happen at the same time. 
so that's why user two will sends to its own server that is server b and then server b will search for that chat server for user one which is actually chat server a so it sends that message to chat server a and then this chat server will deliver that message b which actually sent by the user two and similarly the chat server b will deliver that message a to user two so both the users got the information and as soon as chat server will send the data to the desired user it also update that into the database so that in a future if this user one wants to scroll up and see the chat history so we can easily able to provide that if you see this is let's say assume the screen of the user one or you can say the mobile screen of the user one so in the user one the first message it saw is a because it first send the message a and then the next message it got is b which is sent by the user two so the sequence of message in the mobile or the website of user one client is a and then b similarly for user two the first message will be b of course because it sends the message first b and then it receives the message a so as you can see the sequence of messages different for user one and different for user two so that's why all the messages sequence is different for each and every user so even if user one is trying to communicate with the user two but the sequence of message message yet stored into the database for user one and user two will be different so i can assign one sequence number for each and every message of each and every user so for this user one i can assign the sequences id1 and id2 which identify the sequence of the message and the same message which is a actually is having a different sequence number in other users so on the basis of the sequence number i can easily able to track the series of information that presented to the user so the user one has id1 and id2 messages in this sequence and user two has sequence of messages is id2 and id1 so like that we give the identification id or any kind of sequence number to each and every messages that has been sent from the user one to user two or user two to user one whenever the chat server receives a new message it need to store it in the database so we start a separate thread for every connection which actually send an asynchronous request to the database to store the messages so let's say you have user 1 and it sends the message to user 2 so basically there is a new connection that has been made between the user 1 and user 2 and they can exchange a thousand messages between each other similarly let's say in the whatsapp this user 1 wants to send the message to user 3 also so we have the functionality to send the message to multiple users and there may be the possibility that between the user 1 and user 3 also they communicated thousand of messages between the systems so basically we need to have a database that can support a very high rate of text small messages and also that can fetch a range of requests records very quickly because any user can scroll up and see it can able to see all the history of chats very quickly so that's why we need to fetch a range of required very quickly so this is required because we have a huge number of small messages that need to be inserted into the database and while querying a user is mostly interested in sequentially accessing the messages so in this particular requirement we can't use mysql or mongodb as we need a wide column database solution why because for each connection like here we have two connections so similarly for each connection between the users we have a huge list of messages in fact thousand or lakhs of messages so we use the hbase for storing the data because hbase is very efficient database to store the variable size data let's see how so this is a wide column database we call it hbase let's say you have user 
and uh, user1 underscore id is the id of the user1 so i'm identifying each user with its id and this user is having a connections with user2 and also with user3 so you have a two different connections one from between user1 and user2 and another from user1 to user3 and i'm trying to store all these thousand messages in this format this is basically a wide column database so here as you can see between the user1 and user2 i'm storing the messages in the form of sequence so this is the actually sequence that will be shown to the user1 mobile screen so this is the communication between the user1 and user2 and this is the sequence of messages that is there for user1 mobile screen so i specify the sequence number also for each messages and correspondingly the text and this is the wide column database so as you can see in fact for the one particular user id which is a one key or one string we have list of all these different messages in fact we have a we split this particular column also into two parts the first one is the sequence number and second one is the text and i'm storing the wide range of rows here similarly let's say for user 1 and user 3 they also communicated with each other a lot of messages have been shared between the user 1 and user 3 so we can also store this like this so this sequence number and text is common for every connection and we store the sequence number also and correspondingly all the messages that have been shared so in the first case the first text is hi user 2 this is basically the first message that has been shared that has been sent from user 1 to user 2 so we store that with the sequence number then similarly the user 2 also replied to user 1 with hi user 1 so that's why its sequence number is 112 and so on so when this user 1 scroll its screen to the mobile up our database will fetch this particular column from in a sequence so it will able to see all these messages similarly for this different connection which is basically between user 1 and user 3 we have these messages and correspondingly we have sequence number so even if the user wants to scroll up you can able to fetch from this hbase database and all the text will be shown to the user in its ui as you can see the length of this particular columns is different it's a variable length so that's we call as hbase so hbase is very efficient for storing any messaging system database so we have one more module which is very important to discuss which is status management so this status management is the one which actually managing all the user status let's say you have this user and it need to communicate with the chat server so as a first step the user will send a first request which is actually http long pooling request so what is this http long pooling so basically when the user create a connection with the chat server it wants to keep the connection open so that user don't need to check the server all the time for any new messages and as the server got any new message it immediately sends message to the destination user so in the long pooling process client can request information from the server with the expectation that server may not respond immediately as server doesn't have any new data instead of sending an empty response so server holds the request open and wait for the response from the other side of the client until it will become available and once it does have a new information the server immediately sends the response to the destination client so that's how the communication happen in case of http long pooling now so if you see here we have the three responsibility the status management had the first one is connection establishment which is actually http long pooling so this status management system actually works with the chat server and my second requirement is user comes to online from the offline states so basically it's the responsibility of the status management to keep track of user online and offline status 
and notify all the relevant users whenever the status of the particular user changes. Let's say if the user will come to active state from the offline mode, the status management system have to broadcast each status changes to all the relevant active users. So let's say for this particular user, if you have 1 million other users are actually connected with this. So whenever this user comes from offline to online states, its status change must be informed to all the other million users, active users. Now my third requirement is receiver user is offline. So consider the case like user sends a message. Let's say user 1 send a message to user 2. And as soon as it sends the message, the chat server will figure it out that user 2 is actually offline. Then this chat server actually responds back with the failure messages that the other user is offline so you need to retry the messages. So that is also the responsibility of status management system. Uh, one more thing here, if you remember the chat server I told can perform 20,000 connections. It means 20,000 different users can able to communicate with the chat server at the same time. So how chat server will know that when the message I will got from user 20, let's say some user 20 and it need to send to some user 78. So how it get the information that where is the particular user 78 or 79 like any other users. So for this particular problem, this chat server will use a hash map where it will keep track of all the connections. Like for example, in our case, let's say this is one user out of this 20,000 user and it tried to communicate with the chat server with the it tried to perform one connection. So there is one hash map inside every chat server which actually stores the connection ID and correspondingly, sorry, it's not a connection ID, it's a user ID. And then this value point to the connection ID so that whenever this chat server will get any request from some other user I need to and this chat server need to send that response to some other different user so just check its hash map find out which particular destination user connection id and then send the response to that particular connection so it has a key as a user id and then values the connection id so by using this hash map only this chat server has track of all the 20,000 connections. So that's how it make all the communication very smooth. As we understand all the subsystems that are involved in the messaging system and also the database operations. So let's see the low level design of it. So as a first entity, the user will come and all these users will send the request to a load balancer. So why we need the load balancer? It basically distribute the load between all these clusters of chat server because we can have millions of user which actually sends request and we just have a dozens of chat server involved in that so that's why we need a load balancer to distribute the load equally between the chat server please note that in this chat server also internally we have status management service and also we have the individual hash map is also present for each and every chat server and then this chat server will actually store the information into the DB. So as you can see, we are here doing sharding. It means we partition our database into the multiple parts. So here in this case also, we can use the user ID to distribute the data between the multiple databases. Basically, let's say in this case, if you have two databases, so I can just perform the modulus operator with two. And whichever user ID is there, according to that user ID, I just perform the modulus operator with two and correspondingly distribute the data equally between this, these two different databases. So that's the low level design of any messaging system.